Hello, Internet. <laughs> I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. Welcome to Witness <laughs> Serious Business, episode 157. We're here with our friend Bo, still hanging out at Kramer Vineyards. Uh, we posted that awesome interview we had last week. Bo had some wines he wanted to share with us and do a show together. So here we are. What are we drinking tonight, Bo? Uh, this is Finger Lakes Riesling uh, from New York State. And the wines that I was sent, but I was away uh, on a trip, and so I wasn't able to get to them till now. And I figured let's uh, give them a try. See, uh, Finger Lakes kind of gaining, I guess, gaining momentum still to this day in, in popularity and recognition. The well, ones Dan brought back from New York that one time were delicious, right? How can you not be excited about a region that's focusing on Riesling? It's cool to see yeah. that's happening in the United States. I like some stuff from Oregon, but we had some good stuff. It's been, a, it's been a while, man, but... Uh, it's a Riesling show. Yeah, cheers, yeah, right. Dana Eastup. I'm sure you're watching this show. Thanks for bringing us that wine uh, a while back, and uh, hopefully you enjoy this one as well. Mm. So I don't uh, know pricing. Okay. I forgot it. But we're, yeah, not that much. I, I'm familiar with uh, Glenora. I've had It's got a good reputation. Um, but, yeah, starting the first one, um, we are kind of going dry to sweet. Okay. And the Montezuma Winery, I'm not sure. Maybe there's a Hispanic connection with Montezuma. I'm just curious, York. right? Yeah, we're not sure, but um, yeah, just some Rieslings from Finger Lake, so let's see how they are. All right. We got 2011, uh, 12% alcohol, and semi-dry. All right. So. Mm. Is it kind of like some yeah, kind of like some pears like? on the nose, or kind of like applesauce? I'm, I'm going to say like yeah, there's something. It's like a combination of two different flavors. It's really weird. It's a little sweet. It's kind of like the sweetened applesauce, even, right? Not quite the natural like stuff. Like the moths out of a jar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's something also a little strange that's unusual to me, but I, I don't have the recent experience you guys have. I'm going to really go out on a limb here and be like, it's like apple juice and V8. Whoa. Whoa. Like a vegetal thing? Not not vegetal so much as just like the... Tomato? the Yeah, the, just the tomato. Yeah. Right, part of part of V eight, like it's, but it's not hmm. so much that it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't call it bad, right, at all. Like it's I was almost, interesting. I was almost going to go like ruby red grapefruit juice, but it's like it's more. It's like earthy. There's more. more yeah, yeah. There's something earthy to it. I don't know. I like the grapefruit a little better for what that's worth. Okay, but uh, yeah, I was, but, okay, but, but I don't know. Let's stick, let's stick with the grapefruit. Two different yeah, people. Yeah, two yeah, different people. Stick with the but but uh, that's the sweetest thing. It's interesting. I'm. Not too familiar with uh, Finger Lakes Riesling, but I've been able to try with you guys um, a lot of German Rieslings. Mm -hmm. Definitely doesn't have the the mineral component to it that you get out of a Mosul. And of course, there's the climate and soil mm -hmm. and all that. But I'd always associated minerality with Riesling, and this kind of tells me I have to shift my paradigm a little bit and and uh, think about that maybe it isn't there, but. It's not necessarily negative. It's just I don't get that really as much. Yeah, just so, some kind of straightforward apple yeah, fruit. Yeah, it's just it's straightforward. It yeah, pineapples. So it's, it's pineapples are sticking out. Yeah, a little bit of that. For me. So the acidity's got a real lemon juice feel to it, as opposed to like limes or green apples. It's it's got a little more firm touch, I think. Um, hmm. Pretty straightforward. Very. Um, very simple. And, and and again, I'm going to go back to that like sweetened applesauce. Like there's there's just a touch of uh, something something a little not fruit sweetener in there that that I'm yeah. that I'm feeling. No, well, joke, no, unsweetened. Not not yeah. vegetable, but yeah, yeah, just like a little little extra sweet feel to it. And I don't know if that's chapelized or that's the feeling of RS from this region. Those of you who know more about it, clue me in. Maybe that's something that like RS well, from the region kind of feels like. But one thing I'm curious about, and and again, people who know, um, are these uh, young vines, maybe, because uh, it, it's got that, I don't like to use certain words, so I'm trying to think of the right word, but it just doesn't have the developed taste that um, other Finger Lakes Rieslings that I know are on older vines, like the Dr. Constantine Frank wines, sure. mm -hmm. um, or like we've had Red Newt in the past, and that's got some older vines, so it doesn't quite have that developed no. taste to it, and no. so I wonder, maybe that's a sign of a younger vine, or... I don't know. So, 80, Eighty-one 80, points yeah. in the, in simple, the end for me. Simple, yeah. easy to drink. Yeah, yeah simple like eighty-two points. It's, it's not so. not broken in any way, but uh, but just doesn't doesn't really grab my attention either. I but, think I'm uh, at eighty points on it. So sure. It's I would probably drink a glass and not want another one because I'd find try to find something else. Found it. Yeah. 
All right, so the next one we have here is the Glenora Finger Lakes Reason 2011. It's a little bit sweeter. It says medium sweet on the back of it. They got a nice little scale on the back of these wines, which is quite nice. I like seeing that. I do appreciate that. Yeah, so you know what you're getting into beforehand. Um, it's Definitely. In, it's, in four, it's in four quadrants, right? Like dry, yeah. medium, dry, medium, sweet, and sweet. So. Definitely helpful for the American market, too. There's still, man, for people who sell wine, I hear over and over again that there's a really standing. Uh, perception that Riesling is always, yeah. not only Riesling is always sweet, that Riesling is always too sweet and I don't want to drink any of it. Um, yeah. mm. And that's yeah. just not true. Like, there's a lot of sweet Riesling out there. I think Chaz and I, I think we all, I, you know, I'll even admit it, I generally prefer a little sweetness in my Riesling, yeah. but there's oh, a lot right. of great yeah. Yeah. bone dry Riesling out there that's drier than the Kendall Jackson Chardonnay that oh, sure. you might be drinking instead. So, well, and, and a lot of, I think, what you've kind of taught me is that you can have sweet as long as you have acid to back yeah. it up. And right. That's, that's very helpful. As long as right. there's acid there, the wine's wonderful. So. If that sweetness is allowed to like hang on the tongue for yeah. too long and the acidity's not there to sort of like provide a sense of cleanness or something, I don't even know, like, I guess that's what it would be. It does kind of wash right. it. Right, kind of like, yeah. like it just uh, refreshes the palate. Yeah. Uh, if that sweetness is allowed to sit there for too long, it can be like, no, I don't, I don't know so much the word be. cloying, but it's like, it's just, it's lingers, it lingers too much. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Asian pear. What is this again? Oh, yeah. Lenora. Lenora. It's a 12% alcohol. And this is, yeah, right in the middle Lenora of that sweetness. medium sweet quadrant. But. Mm. Getting like some apples. Well. Is it is it just me or is there a little salt on the nose, too? So part of me thinks, like, if you buy this bottle, I would, I would open it and let it sit out for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That just happened. I will open it and let it sit out for a little bit. These are these are popping pours. Um, I think it's a little, little bit of air. Cap. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, um, th these are all popping pours, so I think a lot of that would blow off. But yeah, it's you're obscuring right. it's a, little a little bit, little of, the bit of yeah, a little like little uh, funk, sulfur funk. Yeah. But some apple and pineapple, like he was saying, I actually kind of like the fruit that's going on in the nose. Yeah, the, the white. I think you're talking about the Asian pear. Mm -hmm. That yeah. jumps out right at me. Yeah, possibly because I eat. A a lot of Asian pears, but um, yeah, it's, they're really good. It's sting, yeah, they're awesome. See, I like this. Got some acid to it, though. Mm. Yeah, it's got a little crispness. Still less. Again, that whole minerality thing comes back for me. I'm like, mm. wow, it really doesn't have mm. much of a mineral component that I'm picking up. No. Um, but. I like how the sweetness comes in on the back end of this. There's a little, like like a trickle of honey across the palate, just a little touch um, that I really like. On the front end, it's a little, little awkward. I'll even say, like it's it, like again, like lemony acidity, um, where it's it's hitting a little rough. But then as that kind of fades, like a little bit of sweetness washes down the back. Some nice fruit flavors, and I kind of like how it lingers on the palate and the finish. The texture has has kind of like a, a refined feel to it that, that I enjoy. I will agree on the texture of the sweetness. Like sometimes sweetness can come off a little bit grainy or like mm -hmm. angular. Like this is got a very nice feel on the palate, right? But yeah, the flavors are pretty straightforward, right? The fruit flavors. There is a little bit of the honey characteristic <laughs> Dan was talking about, um, but nice. I mean, it feels like yeah. it just, it's a very linear wine to me. Totally, it just walks across the palate and that's it. You know, it's very unpretentious, but it's also very linear, very basic. Just you know, it's a, I like it quite a bit more than this one. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. That's, I think the sweetness kind of helps in this one. Right, and it's got the acidity to back yeah, it all yeah. up. It's got a little bit of balance. It's, it's got a little bit of interesting characteristics to it. It's a little bitter on the finish for me, though. I get almost like an aspirin pill bittering. Sure. Maybe. Right? Like kind of the sides. Maybe but, like a little bit of the white stuff from a lemon peel? Yeah, like kind of the pith. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a little bit like that, so that's... But I definitely do yeah. like it more than the Montezuma for my palate. It's totally, totally. Okay. And it's and, and of note for me, like th there's like some an uh, interesting expression of fruit that I, I haven't really experienced before in Riesling. Like it's it's light, um, but it's not like it doesn't have like the clarity of like apples that I get kind of from Oregon and Washington, and it's not like the apples and like peaches I get from Germany. Like this kind of is one of the cases from the Finger Lakes where it's really expressing. Kind of like something unique, something yeah. that's really its own, and I, and I like to see that. Yeah. Um, is it 100% Riesling? <laughs> I, I'm going to assume that it <laughs> I is. I think so. Yeah, it's we'll it's assume, not like we'll New York white wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Was, What's that one? Catawba or something? Maybe like I think we'd notice that. Right? Yeah, Probably. a little foxy. Maybe. Um, and that's, no, That that's, we're just talking, yeah. talking there. No, I'm pretty sure this is, this is full-on Riesling. Um, oh, nice. 
yeah, nice stuff. 84 points for me. Um, it's kind of like simple, but it's well put together and enjoyable. And like I said, there is that there is that interesting fruit flavor to it that I enjoy. We're on the very end of bought a very good 85 points for me. It's, it's nice. Yeah. I think it's very reasonable. I was surprised, but you don't know the price. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure, and, and I, I, correct me in the comments, but the, right? they're under 20. I think they're all yeah. under 20 or at like 22, but I think they're all between uh, 15 and 20 or so. I think I'm like 82 points on it. It's it's all right, but... I would, I continue, it, I would continue to drink it, right? Yeah. I don't know how to purchase it, but I continue yeah, to Yeah, it's it. yeah, a free bottle, sure. But I, yeah. I would probably be a little bummed if I paid 22 bucks for it. Oh, yeah. Um, because my value proposition shifts to what can I get out of the Mosul or Oregon and Washington for that price point. For sure. Riesling and still shows maybe a little more complexity. That's what, I'm, that's what I think right. I'm not getting in this wine. It's just complexity. Sure. So, that makes sense. So that's where I, I, I kind of hesitate a little bit. And, and I, I would be interested to try uh, other stuff from this producer mm -hmm. too. So I, I kind of will be on the lookout for them because I imagine like, you know, if they've got higher end selections or something like that, that yeah. those, those yeah. could really bring something interesting to the table. Yeah. So, um, All right. On to wine number three. I don't, I don't even know what these are. Bo put the show oh, together. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Chaz and Bo mostly pre-tasted them. I didn't pre-taste nothing. No. Oh. This one is uh, Wagner Vineyards Riesling Select uh, Estate Bottle 2011. Hmm. So this is a producer I've never had. It's from uh, Lodi, New York. Hmm. So, yeah. Chaz is giving me difficult rinses. It's a good thing these are Rieslings. Thanks. And this is the sweetest on the palate, or on the, on that, what is it called? The International Riesling Foundation Scale. This is the sweetest of these three. I'll so. throw a photo of that up there, so if you haven't seen that before, you can see that. Yeah. And a it's lot of on American, so many domestic A lot of American now, wines. Yeah. Great. Doesn't, Bro doesn't Brooks put it on their mm -hmm. Rieslings now? Yeah. yeah. Well, even down to, like, I mean, Chateau St. Michel even puts it on theirs. Yeah. You know? And so okay. it's, yeah. It, I think it's helpful. It's, it's very right. helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Because there is a huge distinction. Like, Riesling can be just anything, right? So... All right. Okay, so this kind of does have some mineral thing to it. I'll say it, yeah, the nose is a little reserved, yeah. It's also got a little like, petrol leak. Yeah, 2011, okay. Well, these are all 11, so I wonder... They're young. I, I, yeah, I, but it shouldn't have that petrol -y thing if it's young. Uh, yeah. You're the winemaker, so I'm, I know a little less. Like I, I'm reading this Never as a little bit a of salt too. No, but I'm reading this as just a yeah. just a touch of that. Or, but but yeah. again, like wine that's freshly bottled, I right? The, more the nose, on this than that. the the nose, yeah. right. the nose is kind of subdued right after bottling. Like wines are a little tighter after bottling. It takes a while for those to I mean, I've had these for a month. I can't imagine them being bottled too recently. It ha I mean, they're, they're 2011s. I I'm thinking spring bottling. Could be. Because I don't Could think be. they saw malolactic either. Um, um, and all that green apple says maybe that there is a ton of malic in there. I don't know. But again, someone who knows can maybe chime in in the comments yeah. and yeah. set us straight. Sorry about the lack of preparation on this show. I, I kind of winged it on the selections we're, we're, tonight. We're looking like dummies on the internet. That's a, it's not new. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not new. Tough to pick up. The, yeah, the nose, the nose is really rough for me. Like I'm just, I'm struggling. A little bit of Asian pear, a little bit of apple, and we'll just go with kind of a subdued nose in general. Well, you know, like very subdued with, with like I green know. apples or something when you cut them, and yeah. like maybe you forget to get to the apple. Like you just have it sitting there on the counter, and it starts to brown over, and it's mm -hmm. got a little bit of like a weird, like earthy thing going on with the the, the, the aromas. That's what I'm sort of getting in this. Well, sometimes when I think of that, it's oxidative qualities. Like it's kind of oxidized a little. And you don't feel that. I, I, when you, now so that you, you say you are, it though, but now that you say it, I'm starting to think, wait yourself. a sec, maybe it does have I don't that, feel oxidized, but, but okay. I, it doesn't, it's not as strong as in oxidized wines that have that. I usually that call it like, I usually call it like old fruit, right? Like, and this is what the sort of notes I get that, right uh, that almost diesel-y, petrol -y thing, which I just don't think should happen in a wine this young. I think you're way better off drinking it and not smelling it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it tastes pretty good. I think. I really like how the acid settles on the palate in this one. It's got a good texture to it. And this one with a lot of intensity. <coughs> wow. <coughs> it does. The acid kind of kicks you a little bit. That, in a, in yeah, a really so. good way because it stands yeah. up to that sugar. Mm -hmm. But I think this palate, this mouthfeel, and the texture with the Glenora's nose, and you'd have a really fun wine. Mm -hmm. uh, a more interesting wine. Yeah, I like the acidity. I like the roundness. I think the residual sugar is probably contributing significantly to that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot. 
a good dollop of walrus in that one. Yeah, the, the, the fruit flavors are still on the simpler side, but I'm getting some nice apples, and they linger They linger on the finish, which is, uh, which is nice time. to see. Yeah. yeah, the finish is quite long on this. It's almost like citrus blossom for me. The There's flower, good the, amount of the suggestion of flower instead of the actual citrus fruit. Yeah. That's what I kind of pick up. Actually, I really like this late on the finish. I, I think this really shines after you swallow it. You're getting a lot more of that evolution with the acidity. The fruit kind of dries out but doesn't go away. And uh, there's a nice sense of evolution on there. For me, it's, it's, it starts off sort of weird. Like it starts off like a orangey, mm -hmm. earthy. Like I don't, There's something going on, but the, like the, the apple fruit comes in strong once you swallow oh. it. And it hangs for a long time. The, fit, the intensity, the amount of... Uh, yeah. The amount of flavor that you get after it's swallowed is substantial, which is pretty surprising. And then, uh, orange yeah, is so accurate, I think. I really yeah. Yeah. It's, or yeah. it's orange, I, I orange think, juice or something, or like a mimosa, like it's got that sort of, of yeah, yeah. That, uh, twang to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's strong, it's intense, it's a good call. It's, it hangs for a long time, it's, it's delicious. I, mean, I had my initial, you probably gonna see some of my facial reactions when I was first tasting this. It was like maybe the trans the, cha the transition from the Glonora. To this, like something was wrong. I was like, "Whoa!" Like, actually, yeah. this is going to be bad. No, this is this is quite good. It's now just that, that now disconnect. Had a few sips of it, it's, it's between good. the bouquet and the, the texture is so weird. Mm -hmm. I don't. That's what it's disappointing. It's like the other you, you want the total just, picture. Just drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just just don't really. But so much of tasting wine is still the smell. But absolutely, just, the, the no, sniff yeah. is so muted. You know, like you're saying. Yep. And, and people have been critical of me about this in the past, and, and you can continue to be so. While I love it when wines smell good, um, it doesn't bother me so much when there's that disconnect. Like, it's, it's good when they're all together, but I'm still feeling this. 87 plus for me. Um, it's like apple juice when it warms up. Yeah. It's, 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 when, it's, it's warmed up, it's an apple -y. Out of those little little bottles, glass bottles shaped like apples. Yeah, just That's like, like from my oh, childhood, yeah, yeah, it brings yeah. up that memory of that taste. Solid, just solid fruit, a little really bit nice. of evolution, good mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's it's definitely some enjoyable reasoning. So so thanks for sending that. Mm. Sending that yeah, thank you, Finger sharing. Lakes yeah. people. I really appreciate the chance to find. So I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna agree with Dan on this 87 plus. It's like just below 88 for me because there's some things about it I'm kind of hesitant on. But there is some undeniably fantastic things about this wine, right? Like it's it's interesting enough that if you have the ability to buy this wine, you should at least buy one bottle and mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah, definitely for geek value, because it's, yeah. it's it's really kind of it's it's cool riesling from all the way across the country. So yeah, it's anyway. nice. It's it's a very drinkable wine from Lodi, New York. Lodi. <laughs> this is the weird thing. What was it? Lodi and Dundee. Dundee. Yeah, yeah. yeah Dundee. <laughs> Dundee. New York. Mm. These are small <laughs> towns that I'm very unfamiliar with up there. Yeah. Anyway. So you think, is this your favorite of the three as well? Yeah, I would, I mean, I using your scale, I'd probably be like 84 plus 85. I, mm -hmm. uh, my, my thing is I like to see integration of the aromatics and the texture. Sure. And I think there's that disconnect, and to me it's a little disappointing. I'd like to see more of that come together, but if it did come together, I'd be like way up with you guys. Like, mm -hmm. I would think, based on just the taste, 87, 88 is like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a really good bottle of wine. Um, if you're like cold or something. Yeah. Perfect yeah. wine for when you're yeah, cold. Yeah, you're all congested and <laughs> don't want another hot toddy because you're just blasted. Drink this. It's really good. Right. It's really tasty. So. Cool. All right. Well, that's uh, that. That's this show. Uh, I have a question of the day. Chaz has a question of the day. Chaz yes. is gonna so, usurp Bo. So. By all means. Lots. It is. It is mustache November, right? <laughs> Lots it's Lots. Yeah. November. Yeah. November. Yeah. November. It is November. November. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ben Beard. Okay, so we were talking about uh, German Riesling, right? You know, like you said something to the effect of, if I'm going to spend twenty dollars, I can get German Riesling at that price point. That is more intriguing. Mm -hmm. I, I feel personally that Germany is one of the last places that you can get like distinct single vineyard bottlings at what I would con consider a decent price, right? You can buy of, of specifically Riesling. Yeah, of Riesling. Of, of Riesling. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, like. But the, the grape that the region does well, right? Like sure. They do one-off, single vineyard, spate laser, osh laser you can get for $35 a bottle. You look at Pinot Noir from Burgundy. Pinot Noir from Oregon. You yeah, start, you start to do single exactly. vineyard. Uh, and so Even just for, single for you group. guys and for the rest of you, for the rest of the viewers, is there any places in the world that match up like Germany? Because I don't know them. 
honestly, and I would like to know that question. Do you think there is? I'll tell Adi J. What, the, um, what did you just say? <laughs> no, so, Northern Italy, um, I okay. think they do Pinot Nero, Pinot Noir up there. Okay. Um, yeah, they yeah. do Kerner, Mueller, Turgau, they do Gewurztraminer, they do Pinot Bianco or Pinot Bianco. And so, uh, so, the, so the price point is still killing You're it. You're spending like 20, 25, 30 bucks. Fantastic. For amazing wines. wine. So you'd say Germany. Yeah. I'd say Alto Adige for my number one. Okay. In terms so of what, diversity what you, what the you, price what, point. What is your favorite? Putting, putting out, right. And then, and, and, you know, and Germany is easily my favorite. I'm suspicious, and, man, and I, I, I've even been trying to get like outside of France. Uh, but but I, think you can, I think you can kill it in Beaujolais with Gamay oh, Noir, the man. most famous... Great from that region sure. in the twenty dollars price point. So that's, that's my answer. That's Prices have been point. starting to move up, but man, like yeah, yeah. But still for twenty. And same thing for German reasons. You can yeah. get, you can yeah, get no, that's a really good distinct point. single vineyard stuff. So Germany, Alto Italy, 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 and and Beaujolais. And, and Beaujolais. Oh. List some more regions where the yeah. the main grape of that region you can still get great stuff yeah. for the twenty dollars price point. Thanks for watching. See you guys.